everyone. I'm Rebecca Weber, and this is your AMAC podcast, Better for America. If you're not getting your political news from AMAC, then you won't be informed about American politics. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button and download the news app, the AMAC news app, if you haven't done so. And to all of our AMACers listening, I just want to thank you. Thank you for tuning in. More and more people are watching Better for America, and we appreciate you joining us. Now, did you folks know that AMAC offers you help? with your social security. And in my opinion, this is one of the greatest services that the AMAC Foundation offers, and anyone can access this incredible resource. We're gonna talk a little bit about that today. Now, many of you have seen and read the popular Ask Rusty column in the AMAC magazine and on amac.us. And with us today is Rusty himself. His name is Russell Glore, and he's here along with Jerry Hafer, the foundation's former and very recent former executive director and another fantastic social security advisor here at the AMAC Foundation, and that's Jerry Hafer. Jerry and Russ, thank you so much for joining us today. It's great to be with you. Pleasure. Great to be with you, Becca. Excellent. Yeah, thank you, Russ. Russ, I'm going to throw my first question to you. Uh, I I want to, to really gear this first question around the Social Security Advisory Services. There's so much that the AMAC Foundation does to help Americans, all Americans, including our AMAC members. But the Social Security Advisory Service really helps people to maximize their Social Security retirement benefit, and it sheds light on so many uh, questions that people have, many of which uh, folks didn't know, didn't know about before they called before they called you. And you've helped these people. You've helped them avoid losing their benefits. You've helped them uh, realize more benefits, more money, uh, really gaining tens of thousands of dollars in some case for some of our AMAC members, uh, and they would not have otherwise known about these great benefits. Can you share with us, Russ, how has the AMAC Foundation Social Security Advisory Service grown, and how many people, how many seniors is your team currently helping on a monthly basis or yearly basis? Well, yeah, happy to, Rebecca. Thank you. Um, so our service has really grown almost phenomenally, I guess you'd say, from less than 300 uh, five or so years ago that we started the service up for the full year and uh, to over 8,000 this past year. Our current volume is probably going to mean that we're going to be doing about 10,000 inquiries um, this year in 2022. So the volume has grown just, just like a rocket ship. It has, it has gone up. You know, it emphasizes the niche that we're filling because a lot of people have an awful difficult time getting a hold of the Social Security Administration, which is normally most people think of that as the go-to place to get answers for your Social Security questions. But they're typically faced with an hour or more delay on the phone to answer a question. And because of some training issues that they have at Social Security, they sometimes don't get the right answer. When they come to us, we give them the right answer and we give it to them in a very, very short period of time. We have a personal uh, goal within our organization of a 24-hour uh, response time for all inquiries. Phone inquiries are usually uh, much quicker than that if they call during business hours, but email inquiries are also answered. As a matter of fact, I really answer the number of questions over this labor day weekend. So people love that. And the timeliness of our response gets us an 100% satisfaction rating. And the quality of responses gets us a 96 plus percent satisfaction. So how many do we help? Right about now, we do. And it depends on the month. People are on vacation some some months uh, and other months not. But we provide answers to to questions for about between 500 and just under 1,000 people every month. Um, with their social security questions. So uh, it's it's a great service. It's growing by leaps and downs. And we're very, frankly, very proud of it. You know, Russ, uh, I, I am so proud to talk about this, this wonderful service that you offer. Uh, people need this. Uh, when you call uh, the social security offices, a lot of those folks there, they don't have the same extensive knowledge, deep knowledge that your team has. Uh, but I think it's the patience that you bring uh, your the, the listening, the ear that you lend, 
and the way that you're able to really spend time with people. And remember, listeners, this is this is a no-cost service. This is something that uh, Dan Weber himself was so thrilled about. And Jerry, I want to turn to you and, and remind us a little bit about how this whole thing started. You uh, being a friend of the late and great Dan Weber, uh, really rolled up your sleeves and built the whole program uh, just a short handful of years ago. And today, Jerry, the AMAC Foundation offers a plethora of resources that has assisted many uh, Americans in their own unique ways. Uh, share with us what other topics are covered uh, and the, the foundation's educational programs and also perhaps the publications that they offer to help Americans. Okay, sure. Well, as you know, we do a monthly seminar series. Uh, some of those are done locally and some of those are done uh, live streamed across the country. And we do an average of two to three seminars every month on topics that are important to seniors. Uh, for example, Social Security, for sure. We do uh, seminars about Social Security, what's happening in Social Security. We do an annual review of what's new in Social Security. But we do a lot of other topics as well. Um, we do a, a series called Sudden Death, Are You Prepared?, which is basically about preparing a survivor's notebook for your surviving spouse. And uh, that's one that we've done it's a, it's a three-part uh, seminar series, and we've done that 30 times now, and we're just continuing to do it because there's so much demand for it. Um, we do seminars on new to Medicare, for example, people that are aging into Medicare, understanding all the components of Medicare and what you need to know to sign up for Medicare or to manage your Medicare program. We do veterans benefits seminars, um, and then a whole host of topics, again, that are topics important to seniors, things like, uh, for example, over the past couple of years, we've done understanding dementia and Alzheimer's. Um, we did a session on Parkinson's Q&A, understanding Parkinson's disease and, and how you manage that. Advanced directives is another area, for example, that people have a lot of problem fully understanding how advanced directives work, particularly in emergency situations. So we cover that periodically. Uh, sessions on heart health, um, you name it. We've we've done so many different topics through the years, and average, as I said before, of two to three every month, going all the way back to the very beginning. Um, we had to stop that, of course, with the pandemic. So then we shifted to uh, Zoom kind of sessions, and we continue to do those. And when we do. Incidentally, when we do a live stream session or a Zoom session, we do record those and, and we load the recordings on the foundation website so they're available on demand for people. That's fabulous. This is terrific, Jerry. I mean, I just have to interject real quickly because when I take a look at some of these courses that you're offering, uh, courses that, for example, that help people uh, get their their situation in order so that they can age at home. This is something that uh, we hope all of us someday will face at some point in our ripe old age. Uh, but what a wonderful, wonderful resource that you offer, bringing in all of the right people so that all of these things are thought of in advance. And I especially love the courses that you offered to help prevent elder fraud. Uh, we see what's happening, how seniors are scammed across the country, and just equipping people and arming people with the knowledge how to protect their assets and how to avoid identity theft, for example, is another wonderful service. The courses, uh, there's so many of them that you've offered over the years, and I want to encourage people, go to the website, amacfoundation.org, amacfoundation.org. Go ahead and hit that uh, link. Uh, because there, as you've indicated, Jerry, so many of these courses are recorded and available for anyone listening. Yeah, and in terms of publications, um, we do a weekly, uh, it's a blog post really, but it's a weekly publication of a subject important to seniors. And that's where we hit the elder fraud area pr pretty heavily. If you go back th to the foundation news page, you'll see a lot, a lot of articles about how to prevent elder fraud and how to stay safe online, that sort of thing. We take that, that's one we take very, very seriously. We, we publish a lot of material about that. We've also done some major publications through the years. Uh, early on, we did a publication called Who's Who in Social Security, which was kind of a roadmap for anybody wanting to do research in Social Security, it covered virtually everybody that had anything to do with Social Security. And we update that periodically. We're getting ready to update that as soon as the new Congress sits in January because a lot of the committees change. So we'll be updating that. Uh, we've also 
published three publications now on the Ask Rusty series. The first one was just a uh, compendium of questions and answers, and then we did a formal book titled Ask Rusty, What's So Hard About Social Security? Uh, it's a tremendous publication. And then the, the one that we just recently published, and we have it on the website right now for sale, is the uh, Demystifying Social Security. There it is. Russ is holding it up right now. Tremendous publications in the sense that they are written for laymen. Uh, they're non-technical. You know, if you research Social Security, you'll find a lot of stuff that just defies comprehension. But uh, Russ, as the primary author, has written these in, in a style that appeals to just normal people trying to understand Social Security because it is kind of complex. It certainly is. And, and, and I do want to turn back a little bit to the uh, Social Security Advisory Service and the Ask Rusty columns that have been so widely popular among AMAC members. Um, I, I, Russ, this question is for you. Um, tell us a little bit about the financial differences that you've made in the lives of those seeking assistance, uh, because this is why I have so much respect for what you do. This is a service that doesn't cost anyone any money, uh, but what kind of feedback do you hear uh, from AMAC members and even those who aren't members regarding this great service and perhaps some financial savings that they've realized because they called you? Uh, well, first, what I want to do is make sure that everyone understands that we are actually a team of advisors. It's not just it's not just me. We have a team of six advisors, all of whom are accredited and all of whom deep, dig deeply into these questions, and all of whom have helped people get benefits that they otherwise didn't even know about. Uh, we've helped people get ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars in additional Social Security benefits. One that I'm reminded of is one I just dealt with uh, a short time ago where a, uh, a lady did not understand that she was eligible for uh, a spousal benefit from her husband and had never applied for it. And kind of, I think, stimulated by one of the articles that we wrote, sent us, uh, sent us an email and asked about it. As a result of our response, she was able to get an additional 500 and some dollars per month additional benefit over what she had been previously receiving. So that's you're looking at $6,000 a year. She wasn't that old of a lady so that she's going to probably get somewhere in the neighborhood of, you know, if she lives 10 years more, she'll get $60,000 more in benefits than she otherwise would have, wouldn't have gotten. So we're making a difference in people's lives, which is, I think, for all of the six advisors that we have on staff, is the reason that we love doing this, because we are indeed making a difference in people's lives. The topic is so complex, as Jerry had mentioned just a moment ago, um, and what we try and do is break it down into terms that the average person can understand as relates to their specific situation. It really is just... Uh, it delights me to hear that. It really does, because uh, this is the whole purpose of why uh, Dan Weber wanted to f form, or one of the reasons, I should say, a driving reason why Dan wanted to form the foundation. And so, Jerry, I'd like to turn to you. Uh, tell those listening, you know, our AMAC members, they just adore Dan Weber. And boy, are we so grateful that he formed AMAC in the beginning, in the first place. Uh, today, we're well over 2 million AMAC members strong. Uh, but Jerry, tell us a little bit about how you started and where you expect the foundation will be headed. Uh, and then I would like to jump into a couple of frequently asked questions that we're hearing from AMAC members. Uh, so I've got those saved. So don't go anywhere for those who are tuning in. A little history first, Jerry. Well, we started back in 2014. Uh, the foundation was actually uh, got its IRS de designation in 2013. So 2014 was our first full fiscal year of operation. And we started out kind of slow. There were just uh, two of us, I guess, at the time. And uh, Dan and I talked extensively about forming the Social Security Advisory Service. He felt very strongly that seniors aging into Social Security had no place to go to get credible information that fit their situation because so much of it is situational. And uh, so we actually formed the, the advisory service. Um, well, late 2015 we started and then 2016 we took the formal step of identifying four individuals, Russ and I and two other individuals to go, get trained and get accredited. And we started out 
sort of slow in 2016, and all the while we were doing the other things that the foundation does. But you know, we added the the social so social security advisory service then in 2016, and that first year we we kind of felt our way around. You know, it was all you know kind of new. Uh, but we started to grow late in the year, and then the following year, 2017, we started the Ask Rusty series, and that propelled the growth. And so, you know, it's been, um, you know, orders of magnitude growth ever since then. So 2016 to 2022 has just been incredible, phenomenal growth. Um, so that, that's a little bit of the history, but it was all based on Dan, Dan Weber's vision, and he was right. He was absolutely right. And so, you know, we, we just, you know, as Russ said, we are just so gratified at the way that the service has taken hold. And, and I can, you know, I can speak for, I think, all six of our advisors that it's just a tremendous feeling of satisfaction we get from helping somebody. And uh, particularly people. It's terrific. Yeah, particularly people that come to us frustrated, um, you know, because they just can't get the help they need. They, they try to look at it online and it's just. As I said earlier, it just defies comprehension. You know, Jerry, imagine that. You can't get the information you need when you call the federal government. Hmm. Uh, Dan was certainly very wise when he recognized that this was something so desperately needed by people across America, and I just love it. It's terrific. Uh, the AMAC Foundation offering social security advisory services. This is for anyone of any age. You have a question, give us a call. That's what we're here for. We're here to service Americans across the country. And uh, I just love all of the other things you're doing, Jerry and, and Russ and your entire team, the uh, great informational seminars. They are fantastic. So it's just a joy to have you both with me. And before I let you both go, gentlemen, I do want to talk, uh, ask you two questions. I'll direct one to good Rusty, the old Dear Rusty column that we absolutely love. And then a second question I'll toss over to you, Jerry. So this is direct from our AMAC members who did write in. And our first question reads, Dear Rusty, what is my Medicare monthly payment based on? This particular member, Rusty, says that she pays $140 per month while her husband pays $145 per month. However, she only receives $390 per per month in Social Security, and her husband receives 1200 She asks, is there a rhyme or reason for how much I pay for my Medicare premium? <laughs> and, and yes, of course, there is a rhyme or reason. Uh, the first thing I had to explain to her was that her Medicare premium amount really has nothing to do with the size of her Social Security benefit. Uh, that's Medicare premiums are determined by their combined income. If it's a married couple, that means income from both of them, from investments, from from part of, part of their Social Security, you know, from any any other money. There are uh, re required minimum distributions that they might have to take, and so on. It all counts as as income for them, and that is the base becomes the basis of their Medicare premium. Now, in this case, the couple had two different amounts that they were paying, and the reason for that is that Medicare has something called uh, a, or Social Security and Medicare have something called a hold harmless provision, which means that uh, their Social Security benefit payment cannot go down because of a, an increase in the Medicare premium as dictated by, by Medicare. So what happened in this case was that the hold harmless provision kicked in requiring them to pay less than the standard Medicare premium in both cases. So they're, they were paying $140 and $145 respectively. In one case, it was uh, the lady was paying the actual amount of the Medicare premium. In the other case, the husband was not, but it had nothing to do with the size of the Social Security benefit. It had to do with their income So uh, and, and the whole harmless provision. Thank you so much. Yeah, that, that makes a heck of a lot of sense to me. And th these are really great questions. Uh, it's wonderful that you've got the answers. Jerry, I want to throw a question over to you uh, the, from another AMAC member. This member says, what is my full retirement age going to be? Will it continue to increase? And if the full retirement age increases, 
how might that impact a reduction in my Social Security benefit if I collect early? So this is a question really about what is full retirement age currently, and is that going to continue to increase? And for those who do collect early, what kind of a hit do they, do they realize? Is there a general rule of thumb? That's interesting. It's a question we get frequently because we're constantly amazed at the number of people that are not really aware of what their full retirement age is. You know, historically, people thought it was 65. That was the generally accepted retirement age. But actually now, if you were born in 1960 or later, your full retirement age is 67. Um, now, if you retire at 62, just, just as a, a rule of thumb, if you retire at 62 and your full retirement age is 67, your benefit will be discounted by 30%. So, it, which is another thing wow. that a lot of people aren't really aware of, you know, when they make that decision to file at 62. And that, incidentally, was one of the, the things that Dan was always concerned about. People don't understand that, the discounting process. Um, so, the other, part of the, the other part of the question was, is it going to increase in the future? And right now, it's frozen at age 67, but we firmly believe it's, it's going to need to advance. Uh, Social Security has some solvency issues that need to be addressed, and one of the ways to do that is to extend the full retirement age a few years. AMAC has recommended 70 percent, uh, 70, age 70 as the uh, full retirement age. And if that were to happen, then the discounting process would have to be looked at, particularly because we're recommending the early retirement age stay at 62. So from 62 to 70 would be just a, a substantial discount uh, on the benefits. So we, we think that needs to be looked at. But um, some recommendations that we've seen move the early retirement age and the full retirement age in tandem so, you know, the discount process wouldn't really change that much, but, but we don't recommend that. We recommend 62 as the early retirement age. So part of our recommendation will have to be looking at that process that, you know, that discounts the benefit. This is fabulous what you're saying here, and it's just so much uh, helpful knowledge that you and your team has, and I'm, I'm so proud of what all of you are doing to bring these wonderful services to the American people. Uh, Social Security Advisory Services, check us out, whether it's you who has a question, perhaps you have a question for a, a mother or a father or a relative, we are here to help you. Russ and Jerry, Thank you so much. You really are providing just a marvelous service for all Americans. I thank you so much for spending time with us today because your leadership and your heart are really what makes the AMAC Foundation and really America so great. Thank you both for being here. And I want to thank all of you listeners out there, especially our AMACers. Thank you for tuning in today. If you haven't downloaded the AMAC News app, you can go ahead and watch and listen to this podcast and track breaking news right there. Please make sure to hit that subscribe button, like, follow, and share wherever you are on social media. Until next time, I'm Rebecca Weber. This is your podcast, Better for America. God bless you all. Have a great day. See you next time.